What's going on guys, this is Burrs. I want to talk to you today about a blade I've been carrying for a few months now. This is made by Southern Grind and it is the Bad Monkey. Now I've been using this as an everyday carry blade. A lot of people like to use a smaller blade in that capacity. I actually like a larger blade. I like something around four inches. And this blade right here is exactly that. It's a four inch blade. It's a liner lock and it's made here in the USA. Now what I was looking for for this review was what I would call an heirloom. Uh, knife. Something you're going to have for a long time, something you're going to hand down to someone in your family, maybe your son, your daughter, or, or what have you. And that's the knife I was looking for. Going into the past, you know, what I've used over the years, kind of like this Recon 1. You can see it's beat up and used very much so. And I have the Spyderco um, Military. Used this a long time ago. Don't use it as much anymore, but uh, it's definitely a knife that uh, I'll grab every once in a while. And I like both of these, you know, they're both around. Um, we're having about $60 for this Recon 1 and about $100 for this military, maybe 110 uh, So the price is right, you know, for most anyone to get into these two blades. And what I was looking for is to do something a little bit different. Find something that's gonna be what I would call an heirloom knife or an heirloom folder because this is a folding knife. Something that's going to, now grant, I'm in a very small space, so flipping that open. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little difficult, but you know, something that's going to be able to be given down, stay in the family, and it's going to, you know, perform for years on end. And I really found that with this knife here, this Bad Monkey uh, by Southern Grind. I mean, right off the bat, when you receive this, what you're gonna notice is the fit and finish is definitely above other companies that are out there, like a Spyderco, definitely, definitely like a Cold Steel. And it's not so much in the materials they use as it is in the actual function of this knife. Now, when it comes to a liner lock, it locks up tight. There is no movement left and right. There is no movement up and down. That's a very key feature. You can see that it locks up very, very, you know, soon, okay? It's not, the liner lock's not going very far over to the right, which means you're gonna get years of service out of this liner lock as it wears down over the years. If you have a liner lock that goes over too far, you're definitely not gonna get many years of service out of it. So, as far as that goes, you know, it's definitely a good feature. As far as it lining up, you can see, dead center, perfect. As far as what's used here, it's the only really that one downside is these proprietary, um, you know, fasteners. Now, even though they're proprietary fasteners, they do sell a kit on their website where you can actually, um, you know, use the kit to actually take this apart. So that's one downside. If you're gonna buy this uh, knife, you're going to have to use the proprietary stuff to get it on and off. You can't just use a Torx, uh, an Allen, or a screwdriver of sorts, you know, based on all the different companies and what they use. Um, so that's one downside. So let's get down to the details here of what this knife entails as far as the materials go. This is a four inch drop point blade and it's made of 14C28N. Now, that is a Sandvik steel, and I've been a huge fan of Sandvik steel ever since I got uh, my Kershaw, uh, what's it called, the Kershaw Skyline. I've uh, been a big fan of that type of um, you know blade steel. It gets extremely sharp. Uh, it's relatively easy to sharpen. It's not too difficult to sharpen, and uh, you know it lasts for a decent amount of time. Uh, definitely lasts a little bit longer than what you would get out of your um, OS 8 steel, kind of like the Recon 1 and uh, you know, it holds up very well. I haven't had any sort of problems with, uh, with you know, dings or dents or chips or anything like that. And uh, I've used this on you know, wood, used this on you know, cutting boxes open, uh, you know, whittling down stuff. And you can see, I mean, that I'm going to move the, uh, move the schma in the background. <laughs> you can see on this one, you know, there's definitely some wear on it. I took this right out of my, my pants here so you can kind of see the dust in there. Um, I didn't really want to, you know, shape it up and get it all perfect for this video. I wanted you to show you exactly what it looks like, you know, coming right out of, you know, use, uh, which I've, you know, used this for uh, a few months now, about three months. I've only sharpened it one time during that period, and uh, it still holds a good edge. I'm not going to do any paper demonstrations of how it cuts because how are you going to judge off a of video how well something cuts? I mean, you can look at the cut pattern of the paper, but um, just by seeing it on a video, you can't really tell. Um, but I'm gonna tell you right now, you've seen all the other knife videos I have, this thing cuts very well. And that Sandvik steel is amazing. I'm a huge fan of that steel. Uh, as far as this liner lock goes, this is actually a titanium liner lock. 
uh, and the grind options you have are either a hollow or a conventional flat grind. So you actually get some uh, different um, options there, what you want to do with the, uh, the blade. This is a carbon fiber handle. Now I've never had a carbon fiber handle and the thing that I've come to know from you know using this over maybe a G10, which is what is on these two, is it definitely has some grip to it. Um, my initial thoughts, I've, had, I've seen some carbon uh, fiber in the past and my, what I've seen is it's been kind of glimmery or shimmery or, or glistening or are there any more girl terms I could use? I don't know. But <laughs> what, uh, what I've noticed with this is it's kind of grinded down and sanded down and it does have a nice rough texture and when your hands get kind of sweaty or wet, still does grip onto there, which is definitely something that you want to see uh, in an everyday carry blade. When we come back to the back here, what we have is the, I guess some people call it jimping or uh, serrations back here. Uh, I won't call it serrations, but the jimping back here. Um, and what you'll see there is it looks rather large. And what I notice with this is in this area right here, it definitely does grip. But when you get out towards the blade here, this jimping right here isn't really grippy. Now I'm not a huge proponent or person that's gonna talk about jimping. It's not a huge deal if it's there or it's not. But I would like to see a little bit sharper jimping on here. If they're gonna put it on there, make sure it's useful. It's definitely more useful than some on the market, but I think they could definitely make that improved uh, compared to what it is here. Moving on to the liner here. The liners are titanium liners. They are not skeletonized, as you can see. I definitely would like to see that. Move the weight down, down a little bit. Um, I don't think that uh, there's any need to not skeletonize these. I uh, definitely want to get the weight down. It's not a, he a heavy knife. It's only uh, 4.97 ounces, so you're looking at a five ounce knife. I carry this every day for the most part, and I gotta tell you, it's not extremely heavy at all. Uh, it does have a little weight to it, but it's not something you're gonna be like, holy crap, I can't believe I'm gonna carry this every day. Um, it's definitely something that's kind of in the middle as far as weight goes. So as far as the rest of the um, specs go, the total length of this is 9.25 inches, the handle length is 5.25 inches, and the thickness is 0 0.130 uh, inches thick. So you're looking at a really good hefty blade. Um, you know, the one thing you, you worry about on knives is the tip. You can see on that tip, it's not a small tip. You don't have to worry about it actually, you know, uh, snapping on you. I've had this thing into uh, wood and uh, have not had it snap. When you look at other blades on the market, we'll take these two for example, it definitely is more to the line of the Recon 1 than it is this uh, flat ground um, Spyderco military. Um, and it really is a very stout blade. Um, I have had no problems nor any worries. Uh, when I was testing this a little bit, um, you, I put it into the wood and then pull out the wood or, or chip out the wood, trying to get that tip to kind of have some fatigue. Haven't snapped it or haven't seen any chips or anything like that. So this tip is definitely good to go. You know, the overall feel of this knife is something that is gonna last for a very long time. Uh, definitely a lifetime. It's constructed well. Um, there's nothing rickety about it. You know, you get a cold steel knife, you use it for a little bit and you kind of feel as though, you know, it's getting a little rickety. You use this knife. This knife, after three months of everyday use for the most part, uh, feels pretty much the same as the day I got it, minus a little bit of uh, you know wearing it in as far as the knife opening. And the knife opening itself is a little uh, tough, um, and that's probably where that getting that kit would probably do me a little bit of good as far as adjusting the, the opening so I can get this out a little bit faster. But as far as opening it, it's not hard, um, but it definitely could be a little bit quicker. And all that has to do with is just actually taking that kit as far as the proprietary fasteners and just probably loosening them a little bit. That way you can uh, you know, speed up the uh, deployment a little bit. Uh, the pocket clip here, as you can see, it's not a deep carry uh, pocket clip. What you'll have here is this right here will be hanging on the outside of the pants. Uh, the pocket clip works. Um, it's not against the, uh, try to get this on camera, it's not against the handle, so you're not gonna have it you know, rubbing and, and causing problems with tearing up your pants uh, terribly too much uh, compared to some other ones on the market like this uh, Recon 1, which definitely uh, is against this G10, so every time you take it out, the G10 uh, and the pocket clip rub against your pants. Um, I would call this more along the lines of what the Spyderco is as far as the clip. I bent this one up a little bit, 
but it's definitely not you know against that carbon fiber handle so you're not going to have a huge amount of problems uh, that way. I don't carry my, my knife with a pocket clip. I carry it in my pocket, uh, tipped down, so I don't use the pocket clip much, but uh, I have on occasion just to test it out, and it holds it in there perfectly fine, um, so there's no problems with the clip there. As you can see, it has a pretty generous uh, lanyard hole right there on the back, so if you're into lanyards, uh, you definitely have that option as well. The other thing on this blade that kind of adds to the value is the Emerson Wave function. Now, I'm not a big user of the Wave function, um, I, you know, you normally always carry it in my pocket. I don't really have uh, a use for the wave function, but if you are a user of the, uh, the Emerson wave function, um, you know, definitely it's going to add to the price a little bit. I mean, this is, you can't get it without this. And that's one downside I'd like to see them change is, is make a version without this Emerson wave function. Um, but you know, if you're a big fan of that, then this is definitely probably a blade that you're going to, uh, to enjoy. Overall, the fit and finish is just uh, really good, and it's what you'd expect. And the one cool thing is, uh, I recently went on their site and saw they have an actually build your own, uh, which comes with some uh, options as far as the handle material and color, um, and the blade color, and uh, you can kind of customize a little bit as far as you know which blade you want to have, etc. So they have like Coyote Brown, OD Green, I think Pink probably for girls, etc. So they're definitely trying to get out there and, and, and get their name out there as far as making quality stuff. And I gotta tell you, this is definitely a quality blade. It's the one that's gonna be in my pocket, you know, for a, for a very long time. It's something I definitely feel as though is gonna withstand the test of, uh, of my life. And it's definitely gonna be something that's gonna be handed down to my family. Uh, and compared to some other blades in the market, you know, like the Spyderco, it just has a different feel to it. It has that heirloom, you know, long-term, old-school build quality uh, feel to it. You know, in conclusion, you know, the minor things that I'm saying here as far as uh, downsides, which would be the proprietary fasteners, slightly the jimping. Um, I think one thing they could do also is concave this, uh, concave this in a little bit so that your, your um, finger um, moves in, you know, um, naturally into the, uh, the thumb stud. Um, I've seen that with their build a bad monkey knife, but I don't see that with this one here. Um, I think it's one thing they could add here that would definitely uh, improve, you know, just, you know, getting your, your finger into there as far as uh, deploying the blade. But, you know, those minor things are definitely something that um, is not going to affect how this lasts. Uh, it's going to affect how it's used, but not last. And that's the one thing that's impressed me the most. This thing is built, you know, like old school America. It's built very well. It's definitely something that's going to be passed down in my family uh, for generations, uh, in my opinion. So if you guys have a Southern Grind knife, or uh, even in particular a bad monkey knife from Southern Grind, go ahead and put it in the comments down below. Or better yet, make a video about it. And until next time, later. So as far as... So, so as far as the rest of the... Um, 